Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a word cloud. So in the web you probably have seen letters that are oriented horizontally horizontally and vertically and they look like they're different colors and it could essentially look like a word cloud or a tag cloud. And in this instance uh, we can have it change here so I can change different words here. These are actually countries of the world but they would have different fonts and font types and font styles and, and different sizes. And we can create something like this to create some visual flair, visual appeal, something maybe we can put into a PowerPoint slide or whatnot. I'm only showing a few words here or a few countries, but you can create it as large, as, large or small as you want. And I'll show you how to create this type of word cloud. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a new sheet here, and I'm going to take my table. I'm going to take my table of countries. I'm going to take it from here. Basically, that word cloud was taken from two tables, one that creates the randomization or randomizes the order and the other one that does a lookup based on the rank that brings it over to the cloud. So I'm just going to take this table here and go and just take the countries. I'm going to select that, control shift down arrow, control C to copy, and bring it over here to sheet one. I'm gonna, it's in the third column, so I'm just going to bring it over here and just kind of arbitrary put it here in, in any row but the third column. Control V to paste. Let me go ahead and double click this column to increase it. So what we want to do is we want to have a column that generates random numbers and we also want to have a row that then ranks it. So I'm going to label this random and then this will be the rank column and this will be the countries. Right? So to generate a random number we can just use the Excel function random, R-A-N-D. And it's going to generate a random number between 0 and 1. It doesn't really matter to us if it's 1 to 10, whatever. What we're going to do later on is we're going to rank it. So I just pressed enter and it generated that random number. So if I want to calculate now, this is in the formulas tab in the ribbon and under the calculation group it's calculate now. You can also press F9 to generate a new number. So if I click that a couple of times you'll notice that the numbers do change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so what I need to do now is I need to copy this formula, this function down all the way down. So I'm just going to double click that and it will copy it all the way down. So it's going to fill it all the way down. And right now what I want to do now is I want to make a rank of that number. So based off of this number and out of the whole population of all the other numbers, which, where does it rank? One, two, three, four, five. So there is a function called rank. So I'm going to go rank and I'm just going to use the rank dot eq. So if I hover over that you'll see that it ranks a number in a list and its size is relative to other values in the list. If there's more than one value then it, the top rank of the set will be returned. So I'm just going to take that, double click that so it's going to kind of fill it out. Now I just need two arguments. So the first argument is the number. So I'm going to choose this number and the second argument is the reference or the array which table or what the table or the list of values. So the list of values is from A5 and I'm just going to press the control shift down arrow and it's going to select all the values. See A5 to A245. So I've got 245 values here. Uh, excuse me, not 245 values, but 240 values or 241. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and just press enter and now it's kind of disappeared. That's because I pressed enter on that first cell. So it's going to select that 130. So if I press the calculate now, that number is going to change and this, this rank is going to change, right? So if I press calculate now, it's going to change now. It's the 200nd value out of this whole list. Let me double click the fill handle here to copy the functions down. And now we see our ranks here. So if I press calculate now, you'll see that both change. Basically the random number changes and based this rank function looks at this random number here out of the whole population here and gives us its rank. So that's how we're going to do it. Now the second thing I need to do after I created this table, let me go and just kind of format it to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, let me go ahead and just go uh, all board, give it borders and give it a, a cell style, right? And make it look a little nicer. So in this example, I'm just going to bring back three numbers in my word cloud instead of the nine, num the nine numbers or nine um, countries. I'm just going to bring back three, three countries. So I'm going to go ahead and just press control shift plus to add some more rows or you can just go right click and insert. It's going to insert a row. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to give this 
a rank column heading and also a country. Actually, I can just I could have just control C to copy, control V to paste. That would have been done the same thing. <laughs> and I just want to give ranks. I want to I want to have three. One, two, three. Now, uh, easier way to do this. I mean, if I didn't want to just keep typing, if I had more, if I had like one to ten, I can just select that and right mouse click and drag it down. And I want to have it fill series, so it's going to count it. It's going to increment it. One, two, and three. Right. So that can do that. So now here, what I want to do is I'm going to do a VLOOKUP. I want to look at the number one and bring back the value that is uh, adjacent to the number one. So that's going to be a VLOOKUP command. I'm going to type equal and VLOOKUP. I'm going to go ahead and tab to complete that. I want to look up this value. I want to look up this value, this cell. And the table array is here. It starts from uh, B12 and it goes, and I'm going to just select these two first, these two cells here. And then I'm going to press Control Shift Down Arrow to select this whole range. So it's going to be B12 to C252, as you see up here. And what I want to do is I want to press the F4 key. I want to lock this down. I want to have the dollar signs in front of the letter and the numbers. This is an absolute cell reference. And what happens here is when I copy it down, these values don't change. But that value is going to change because when I copy it down, that's going to change from B3 to B4 and then B5 for number two and number three, respectively. Now, the, after the table array, after I define my table array, I want the column index. So the table array spans two columns. This is the first row. This is the second row. So the column index is this is index one. When you think about it, this is index number two. So I want to put number two. And comma. After that, I want to do the range lookup. Is, do, you want, do I want an approximate match or an exact match? I want an exact match. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then close the parentheses, press Enter. So the first one is Cape Verde. So if I went down here and I looked under C, this is an alphabetical order. It makes it easy to look at. If I went to Cape Verde, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I went to Cape Verde, you can see that that's number one. But you notice if I went to the formulas and I went press cal recalculate, it will change. Now it's 113. And of course, in the top, that has been changed now. So I don't need to recreate the formula here in terms of typing it, but all I need to do is just copy it down. So I can just go ahead and double click that. It will copy it down. So as I mentioned before, the value is here. This changes to B4. That changed to B5. But the reference here stayed the same because I had the dollar signs in front of them. I'll press escape here. So now when I have that set, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead. Actually, I don't want this uh, heading up here. I forgot. I don't want this formatted. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the formatting on there. Go to Home. Go to clear and just clear the formats. I just want to have a, a regular cell with no formatting, no bold, no color. So what I want to do here now is I wanted to give these three words different styles. So I'm going to go or and colors. So I'm going to give this a I'll give it a red color. I'll give more the second one a green color. I'll give this third one a purple color, right? And I also probably want to give it different font styles. So I'm going to go right click. And here's a mini toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and select. Maybe I'll select this one as Adobe. I'm going to right click, or I can even go up here and I'll give it a different font style. Let me go down. Maybe something bold, this one. And then for Bangladesh, I'm going to right click and under the mini toolbar. So there's different ways to select theme, uh, theme styles, uh, font styles. So maybe I'll give this one a, uh, maybe this one, this Harlow. Make it look kind of neat. So now we have these three. And I also want to make sure that the fill, the color in the background, is not a fill color. I'm going to select no fill. Now, depending on the color of the this background you want to give it, maybe black or blue or white, you probably, it's probably a good idea to kind of match it up with the border colors. So let's say that I wanted to give it that black color. And I, I created something like a, a background. I'll, I'll put a shape in the background like this. right? And I wanted to give it a, I wanted to give it black. I'll just select black. So probably a good idea is to have the the grids or the borders around it also the same color. So when I select that, I'm gonna go under here, under the borders, and go under more borders, and I'm gonna select black, and also then start to outline it and click the inside so it's, it's gonna get everything. Click OK, and now you notice that it's black. So now what we want to do is you want to copy and paste each one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one, Ukraine. 
control C to copy. And I'm just going to bring it here into any cell and then go to the home ribbon under paste. I want to paste it as a linked picture. So I, I click on that, it's going to paste it as a linked picture. So basically it took a snapshot of that cell and it is a picture. So oh, one thing I forgot to do is probably want to center this. Let me go ahead and select all of these and just press center. So now it's in the center. So now as a picture, you can kind of adjust it a little bit, make it a little bigger. I can make this a little bit uh, smaller here. I can rotate it. See, now I can rotate it a little bit. Let me go and rotate it back so it looks a little bit more normal. All right, and uh, maybe make this smaller. So that, that looks okay. Let's just not rotate it this time, but you, you know what I mean when I say rotate it, right? So you can just rotate it differently. So I'm just gonna go move it around and maybe make this one a little big here. And I'm going to do the same thing, same thing for the other two words. I'm going to do Control C to copy. Uh, I'm just going to bring it over here. And then I can just actually Control V to paste. And what happens is it pastes it as a reference. I don't really want a reference. If I, if I didn't want to go here to the home ribbon and select paste, what it does is after I paste it, it gives me a little tip here. So what I can do is it gives me some paste options. And also in these options, it lets you choose the different options. And I want, I want link picture. So once I select that, it correctly uh, paste it as a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the size here and then kind of move it over here. And then for Cambodia, control C to copy. And then I'm just going to go here and just, I'll do it the normal way here or the other way, the first way, link picture. And I can just bring it in and I can rotate. Maybe I can rotate this. Maybe this one will look better rotated. Let me go ahead and bring this up here. Uh, let me make a, give it a better rotation. So it takes a little bit of time to rotate things here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that over here. You can see that since I selected a black border, it comes up above, I'll comes it over it. But if I kind of move it into this, this picture object here, it kind of bleeds into the back, into the black here. So I'm gonna go and increase the size there. And that didn't look too well, so I'll control Z to undo it. I can also increase the font sizes here to make it look a little bit better. Let's see, so that makes it look a little bit better. So once I go to formula or press F9 to calculate, you can see now the words change a little bit. So this is an example of what you can do to create a word cloud in Excel if you just kind of wanted to play with it and turn it into something a little bit more visual appealing, put this into a slide deck and make it look a little bit pretty. There are, there are applications out on the web that will create this for you, but I thought since we're working in Excel, you can also do something similar to it, although it's not as co comprehensive or as flashy as the ones in, on the web. So this is just another way where you can create a word cloud or tag cloud in Excel, and it's just using a couple uh, features in Excel, such as the uh, functions in Excel, such as the random function, the rank function, uh, VLOOKUP, and uh, insert picture link. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.